Hi there and welcome back to Planescape Torment. I'm Byron and we are still in the smoldering corpse bar. And I'm not really sure to who we already talked yet. I don't think we talked to that guy. You see a scruffy ill-kempt man. He smells strongly of alcohol. Yeah, what do you want, eh? He leans in closer and looks you up and down. Looks like you could use a healer. He laughs loudly at his own poor humor. And the nauseating stench of liquor and poorly chewed food w washes over you. Who are you? Me? I'm Andor. He waves on his feet. Weaves on his feet. He used to be a hell of a fight man too, but that... Uh, that was before the pub took a hold of me. Friends called me Slappy because I was so good at doing it to people, but now they call me Slappy because so many women do it to me when I talk to them. Mm hmm, I'm looking for a journal. You probably can't read. He pauses for a moment. Well, if you lost it in the hive, it's a good chance some collector somewhere has it. Check out in the hive small. They find all sorts of stuff out there. Maybe they can help you. Alrighty. Looking for a collector by the name of Farad. Do you know anything about him? Farad? The name sounds familiar, but ah, uh, you know how it is when you've pickled your head with. When you've done pickled your head with Bob, I'm sure. I just can't remember. You got my apologies, Scum. What can you tell me about this place? This place? Smoldering Corpse. Best place in town for a drink. Leastways, longs. You don't mind drinking near a fiend or two. No, if you don't mind Red Death poking their heads in on occasion. Lots of people here, lots of interesting things. Lots. I assume you're one of the attractions then. Uh, who's that burning by the entryway? That? That's Ignis. He's some crazy old coot mage who got the bright idea to burn down the hive. You see the alley or dangerous angles? He done that. Group of wizards got it together. Did some magics on him and now he's a tavern theme thing. Hmm, mascot. My cousin was one of the wizards. No great shakes as a mage, but he sure got his bug. That's great, Slabby. Farewell. He doesn't know shit. So, we already talked to that. Those mercy killers. Who are you? Ill kicks. You see a short, rotund man with a perplexed expression on his face. From the lines of his loose skin it looks like it's not too uncommon. He carries a flagon of ale that looks like it is in the process of being emptied rapidly. In between swallows he speaks in a gentle voice so quiet that you can barely hear his words. Hello traveler, my name is Ilkix. Can I be of some assistance to you? Greetings. Who exactly are you? I? I am but a humble man with a slight flowery, poetical bent and a tendency toward the supernatural. I regret uh, that I have none of my supplies here or I would be most, most eager to teach you of the ways of power. Perhaps some time later? Yes, I'd like that. For now, let's do some questioning. Who are those guys here? What can you tell me of this place? This place, the Smoldering Corpse Tavern, a fine establishment with a fine owner. Barkers is a true gentleman and ambitious to increase his standing to boot. These, I feel, are the most useful qualities one can possess. They drive people, yes, that's true. What can you tell me of the patrons of this place? The patrons of this tavern are many and varied. I have spoken with most and find them delightful, with the exception of those creatures of law. He gestures towards the pair of Abishai sitting in the corner. They taint the air with their presence, lending an unwholesome stench to an otherwise pleasant environment. I recommend, speak, sp I recommend speaking to Barkers. I understand that he requires some aid with the trifling matter. When we have that O character, I'm still trying to understand him fully. It is quite an undertaking, if I say so myself. Those are the folk of interest here. The others, well, perhaps I'm too discriminating. You despise creatures of law? Ah, a fine question, my friend. My upbringing has been on the chaotic side of the Great Ring. You may speak to Kendrian Ilborn, a misnomer, misnomer if I've ever heard one, of the plains. He fancies himself a great plane walker. To return from my discretions, I have lived my many years with chaos and I find it pleasantly agreeable. To me, the taint of law, as in those creatures here, is reprehensible and tyrannical. If I am to be crushed underfoot, 
I'd rather it be by an individual than a machine that knows nothing of emotion. I actually wouldn't care that much. If I'm crushed, I don't really care who does the crushing. Um, I disagree. Ilquid smiles toothly, his fat cheeks barely moving. To each his own, I say. Did you have more questions? Yes. Uh, who is that burning man? That? Ha! Huh. That is the last unfortunate who chose to exercise his individual will without his strength to back up his desires. His name is Ignis and he is was a pyromaniac. He burned and burned and didn't burn the right people and wound up channeling more raw power than he could control. Now, well, you can see what became of him. If you wish to learn more of him, perhaps that poor creature Drusilla can help you out. She already did. Thanks. Goodbye. So, wait, that's a door. That's awesome. We already talked to him. What's on the other side of I'm the gone. door? This once functional door is now nailed shut and barred on the inside to protect the against thieves. Not to protect thieves. Nobody wants to protect thieves. So, uh, we already talked to you. This bar has seen a lot of use. The scorning of weapons and talents does not mask the grimy buildup of years worth of drinks that encrust the surface of the bar. I should really let that shit be displayed longer. Why do I do that? No, that's not tooltips. Hmm. No, that's not it either. Maybe I can't. Well, that's the keyboard mappings, that's something different. Oh well. Maybe I can't. Who are you? Bacchus. I've heard that you need help. You see a leather-skinned man with just a hint of ashen color to his face. His teeth seem sharper than normal and his eyes are filled with the boredom that comes with having seen too much. His voice is nasal and clipped. You again, eh? What do you want this time? You again? What do you mean? Yeah, you again. You got a hearing problem or something? He was in here about 15 years ago, got all bubbed up and smashed up this place and left a pile of coin that wasn't enough to pay for the damages. So you plucked out your own bleeding eyeball and tells me you'll be back to reclaim it when you got 200 coins together. With 15 years of interest, you've got about 500 coins. You got the jink, pal? I got your eye. 500? That's ridiculous. <laughs> He pauses for a moment, considering. That is it. Tell you what, give me 300 and I, and the eye is yours. Uh, I'm lacking four. Still can't afford it. Then you're not getting your eye back. Makes sense? Come talk to me when you got the jink. Ah, oh, shit. I'm lacking four coins. Did I buy something? No, I didn't buy anything. Oh, whatever. Who are you? Me, I'm Barkers, owner and keeper of this place. What is this place? Didn't you see the sign out front? Didn't you see the burk burning over the furnace when you came in? It's the smoldering corpse cutter. Bass damn bub house and sigil. At least it's the bass damn bub house in this part of the hive which makes it one of the best in sigil. Hell, they got fancy places with plants and such in the ladies ward and they've got fiendish taverns salted around the rest of the hive but none of them got the character of the smoldering corpse. Who's the corpse anyway? Him? Ignis. He used to be a flame wizard, burned down pieces of the hive and got himself scragged by a bunch of other mages. You want to know more about him? Go talk to Drusilla down there by the door. Already did it, Dad. Who is, what is this place? Oh no, we already had that. Did I, who are you? Oh, okay. Uh, what can you tell me of the patrons here? I don't make it a point of to interfere with the lives of the people who give me their hard-earned jink unless they ask me to. So, over there's Kandarin, Ken Kendrian, plane walker. He's a good one to talk to about any plane walking questions you might have. He's been pretty much everywhere. Down there is Ab Creek Knees, an old harmonium basher. Don't hold that against him, and a tout. He's got a good heart in him and he knows sigil up and down. 
Damn fiends over there are Ethelgrin and Ter Tigarin. Word of advice, don't deal with them. They might be low rankers in the fiend hierarchy, but they're still fiends. Then you got Ilkicks over there, not trustworthy, and some mercy killers looking for some Pursad. The Kondi gets a rise, mystery to me. Don't know much about him, he don't talk much, well he joined our group. Finally, you interested in earning some free bub? Yes. There's a bubba over against the four wall hanging about in the shadows who's been trying to work up her courage to slip out without covering a tap. If you want to make sure she doesn't do that, I want you to make sure she doesn't do that. You do it, you got free bub here for life. Okay, I'll do it. Answer some questions for me. Um, I want to drink. Uh, I'd rather have information. Thanks. Uh, I'm still needing money for my eye. I'm looking for a journal. A journal? Paper and words? Friend, that sort of thing don't get much stock down here in the hive. Folks, you can barely read the sign above the door, much less an entire journal. If you're looking for a journal, you do better to have a system instead of asking folks willy-nilly. That's actually true. I'm looking for Farad, the collector. He turns and spits on the floor. Farad? Pah! You may as well just turn your back and let him sink a dagger in it. Though from the looks of you, you already have. If you're dead set on finding Farad, pardon the pun, talk to Ab Creepness over there and he should know something of value. Ab, the old man, my thanks. Okay, so we save and look for that I'm girl gone. again. There she is. You're supposed to pay your tab, girl. Uh, Barker says it's time for you to sell your tap, pay up. She lumps a little and her nervous tension becomes full-fledged anxiety. What are you going to do now? Asking you to go pay up. No. Um, I can't afford it. Can you spot me just 10%? I'll um, give it to him and he knows I'll pay the rest. Mm, how much do you need? I think I need about 100 coins to get started on that debt. Um, I, well, that put me down 100 shit. But, I mean, she looks like she's a person in trouble. I mean, really. Well, why, why should I want to poison her drink with embalming fluid? That's a really... She didn't do anything to me. Why should, would I want to kill her? Can you think of another solution? Another way to pay? Ha, she smiles sadly. You could always um, kill me. I could, but I'd rather find another solution. She looks at you for a moment longer, swaying where she stands and says, um, Alright, did you want something else? Okay, that doesn't lead anywhere. So it's either I give her the money or I kill her. Apparently that's it. Then I, gi then I give you the money. It's The other lead is just plain evil. I lend you the money here, take it and pay up now. She pockets her jink, glances briefly towards the door, almost as if she's waiting her chances of dashing out, sighs heavily as she realizes there's no chance and begins to walk clumsily towards the bar. Oh my thanks, I suppose. Don't mention it, and don't even think about heading for the door until you've paid up. Yeah, great. How am I supposed to get my eye back? Well, I have shit in the inventory, so if I ever happen to find someone I can sell that stuff to, then probably I can uh, get my eye. Guess what? The deal is done. You won't be having trouble with Mokai again. 1000 experience points and yeah, 100 gold gun. Then, friend, you have full bar provisions for free. Anything you want, anytime. That must have been a pretty big tab she ran up. You don't know half of it. You want a drink now? Send me up. You want a drink? You got a drink. This is what we got for you. Beer, bitters, meat, elemental water, arborean fire wine and fire seeds. Cursed hot wine and Batorian whiskey. What would it be? Hot wine. Why not? He passes you a glance of 
Kirst's famous hot wine. The bouquet is breathtaking and the wine itself is full-bodied and fruity. The aftertaste leaves nothing to be desired. Made from real razor wine that is, wish I knew the secret, says the barkeeper. You want another? No. Thank you. So I didn't get an, an item. No. Well. I'm gone. Did we talk to you? Not yet, apparently. So, well, we do that. Elise, you see a trim, muscular man dressed in clothing that is comparatively drab and mundane compared to most of the outfits you've seen in the city. He carries himself with an air of supercilious arrogance. He also looks dramatically out of place here. What do you want, he asks. Who are you? I'm Elise, warrior of renown. Surely you've heard of me? No. Can it truly be? Can it truly be that none in this town have ever heard of me or my exploits? Alas, I shall have to prove myself all over again. And yeah, I had thought my fame had spread across the world. What world are you from? I come from the city of Eliburn on the river Tame. Surely you have heard of its glorious, glories and wonders? No matter, no matter. This place is benighted and ignorant when it comes to the splendors of true cities. I am told that my land is what is called a prime by the denizens of the city. To a prime of what? I do not know. Mm, I asked to the, uh, talk to that girl over here. She knows much more about that stuff. I was chasing my old foe, the villain, vil, villainous, well, he was a villain, villainous life shade, Tyr, Tenelel, Tenelel, strange name. He pauses, waiting for acknowledgement, and then continues. He conjured his demonic magic and opened himself a doorway and hurled himself through it. Before he could flee me entirely, I threw myself after him and found myself here. I got it, you're one of the clueless. He bristles, reddening in his hand, clutches convulsively around the hilt of his sword. Clueless, is it? I take offense to your words, Sarah, and bid you farewell in the hopes that we should never cross paths again. He turns away from you, still flushed with pride and rage. I wanted to ask you some questions. He sighs heavily and eyes you with disdain. Then be on with it, scarred one. Ask and be done. Oh, he's apparently not too angry about me anyway. Well, fine. Who are the patrons of this tavern? The only person I know is Ab here. I am new to this place and I do not make it my business to meddle in the affairs of others. Did you have any further questions for me or may I continue to enjoy my solitude? Not yet. What can you tell me about this place? This is a tavern, one of the familiar sights of home. At least it would be were it not for the fiendlings in the corner and the endless strangers that parades before my eyes. I find that at least there is some humanity in this place for which I am grateful. You're prime, aren't you? If you mean that I am from the true world by then the if you mean that I am from the true world by that, then yes, I am prime. I'm a warrior of some small renown there. And while I may not know all the loopholes of this new land, neither would I call myself clueless of some of the local wallets around here have done. No, alright. Let's just call off the insults, shall we? Call it even? Not until you apologize, villain. He looks like he's just spoiling for a fight. Or shall I provoke you more? Very well then, I apologize. Then... then... Then I suppose as a point of honor I must accept your apology. Very well. In return I, I offer my apology as well. Let us set the matter aside and speak no more of it. See? That's how civilized people do it. Very well. I am looking for a journal. Have you seen one recently? I am afraid that I have not been searching for such items. I am doing my best to reorient myself to this unfamiliar setting and while I focus on small details in my attempt to do so, I must confess I have not been looking for journals of any sort. That's probably for the best. Have you heard of a collector named Ferret? Ferret? Collector? These are names and terms unfamiliar to me. But if I should hear them mentioned in any other context, I shall certainly remember your face. Indeed, I could not forget it. Um, and that's pretty much all we can do here. Okay. So we could fight him, but why should we? I mean, he is clueless, but it's rude to tell that to somebody. 
Ab Creekness. Creek knees. You see a slightly stooped old man with a full grey beard and a lion's mane of grey hair. Who wears a couple of shoulder guards uh, as armor and he keeps a nest a helmet nearby. Well. I don't see it. Oh well. Uh, he smokes a pipe and carries a pouch of tobacco around his waist. He looks pretty strong, but he is a little—he is a little pulp and also appears to have some sort of breathing trouble. Well, now aren't you a lad? Never have I seen so many scars blanketing a fella like a scar cloak you're wearing. Where you've been? Hanging out in a grain treasure? Treasure? He laughs. Oh, I'm just jesting with you, lad. No offense, man. I hope no offense taken. I'm up. He extends his hand. Greetings, Ab. His handshake is firm. Now I hereby tender my apologies for the unfair jesting, lad. Hope no hard feelings. Can I buy you a tankard or two for, of something to smooth any ruffled feathers? Why not? That's the spirit, lad. By the moment, he rises to his feet and heads to the bar. After a moment, he returns to his seat with a pair of tankards. Here you go, lad. Drink up. He takes a massive swallow from his own tankard, puffs on his pipe and says, What can all Ab do for you on this fine sigil day? Of course, we have questions. Uh, oh well, oh well. I gathered that just to look at you. I mean, you don't look like you're from around these parts, lad. You look like a little too out of sorts to be season a seasoned native. Ab chuckles, then takes another drink. So, what can I help you with, lad? You need to know the lay of the land. Yes, tell me how the city and its environs work. Ab laughs loudly. You don't think small, do you? If you want to know what's outside the city, go talk to Kendrian Ilborn over there. He's the traveler of this place. Where is that guy? I haven't seen him. As for the rest of it, well, I can tell you of the lady, the Dabus, keys and portals, and the way we keep track of time, the way the city is laid out. What is it you wanted to know? Wow, you have lots of information here. Tell me of the lady. Well, now. Not many know much about her lad, and I'm figuring even those that know more than a little don't know too much more. She's a mystery, she is, and even should you run across her, powers forbid, she's silent and deadly. She's not evil, as far as I can tell, but she keeps the dark about herself and sigil pretty tight. No, n None's been able to penetrate it, and if they have, they've been mazed. Go on. Chances are you won't meet her unless you do something really bad, hurting a lot of people, killing a Darbus, challenging her rule, worshipping her, she hates that, you figure, or interfering with the Darbus work, which may as well be the lady's work. If you're lucky, just the mercy killers will come for you, but if she comes, you'll be dead as soon as her shadow falls on you. What did you mean when you said mazed? I sometimes bloods will be packed off to a place where they can't do no harm. The lady see she'll take a bit of sigil and make a little dimensional pocket out of it. A maze. She places those that have crossed her in there and let them rot. Air puffs his pipe. No, you can't escape getting mazed once the lady sets her gaze on you, lad. She'll get you eventually, no matter how hard you try and dodge her. You'll be walking down an alley and a or about to step through a portal or take a left turn down the street you've gone many fault times before and suddenly you're someplace you don't recognize. Now mazes aren't escape proof. There's always a way out of each one. A portal the lady places there. You just have to figure out where it is and how to use it. Okay. Tell me anything else about the lady. Go on. Please continue. Now the lady can do almost anything at Sigil Land, near as we can figure, make it bigger or smaller, make new portals, seal off old ones, make sure the blood war don't break out in the streets, keep folks from teleporting into the city, keeping the powers out. Who are the powers? It's another way of saying gods, lad, and there's a great horde of them across the plains. Ab takes a puff from his pipe. They can't come to Sigil though, the lady has a way of keeping them out that she hasn't spilled the chant to yet. Be that as it may, it ke it's kept Sigil from being seized by outside interest. Okay. Tell me about the Dabus then. Uh, let's drink something, that's just a lot of text in this game, as you're probably aware by now. 
Ah, it was funny floating bloods that speak in symbols? Ebloffs. Quite a piece of work, eh? The Darbos are kind of the ladies' janitors and workmen, doing exactly what she wants. Make sure Sigil is running up to snuff, patching walls, tearing down old buildings, building new ones, setting up portals, sealing off others, and on and on. They are a pretty neutral faring bunch and you don't want to interfere with one or kill one or you'll bring the lady's wrath down on you right quick. Okay, let's not uh, do that then. Actually, I'm not really sure. I, I don't think... I've played this game twice, I think. And I, I, I don't think I've pissed off the lady. Yeah, uh, we shall see. Um, can, I can't remember anyways. Tell me of Sigil's time. The way we measure time and sigil are by the brightness of the sky. See, we haven't got a sun and moon like most worlds, we just got this everlasting haze that brightens and darkens at regular cycles. What most folk call midnight we call anti-peak. What they call noon we call peak. See, it's based on the peak and anti-peak of the brightness. So when someone says something about five hours past peak, that's what they mean. Mm -hmm. Tell me of the city's layout. You, let me wet my tongue. He takes a pull from his tanker. The city floats above an infinitely tall spire. The spire. It lies on its side like a discarded wagon wheel, but there's no spokes that connect it to the spire. It's divided into six wards, each of them with its own function. Right now you're in the hive. I think the purpose of the hive is to be squalor to the rest of the city's grandeur. He laughs. Factions, philosophical clubs or gangs if you prefer divide up the running of the city between them. Were you in a faction? Ab raises his hand as if to stop you and laughs slightly. Oh no, hold on lad. I'm no has-been faction member, they say. And they're right. W that once you're one of the harmonium, you're harmonium for life. We're the blood to try and make sure Sigil stays out of trouble. No rocking the spires, no folks getting too over enthusiastic about hurting each other, keeping the city down to a low roar. We try and keep the peace led, and most times we do a decent job. Okay, so there's another guild. The Harmonium. So we have the Dustmen, we have the Mercy Killers and the Harmonium. Oh well. And there's plenty more. I'm not really sure whether I want to join any of those groups. We shall see. The city is... Uh, maybe you can even join all of them. I don't know. The city is called the crossroads of the plains and the city of doors and the cage. It's got portals to all of creation, they say. And all manner of beasties come through here to trade. Call Kip or hop from one place to another. Now that's just a quick version, that You'll have to experience the place for yourself. You mentioned something about portals? The city is called as... Sigil is called the city of doors for a reason, lad. There's portals everywhere. Portals are, well, like doors that lead across the multiverse, except they don't look like doors. Instead, they can be any bounded space, window, door, portal, picture frame, barrel hoops. The spaces inside scruff, inside scruff holding, a wardrobe, each could be a portal waiting for just the right key to open it and take you someplace in the multiverse. Now, keys. Go on. I, each portal has a key, you need to open it. Now by portals can be any bounded space, keys have more variety. They can be anything from a little tune you hum when next to the portal, to dancing a jig to bring in the right mood, to have a piece of the place you want to go in your hand, and on and on. In my use I once convinced, I, I once convinced the girl that kissed a man beside it could open a portal to Arcadia. Turned out I was right, the many trips to Arcadia did we have. Many portals probably have never been found. There's some you can uncover by just asking people and getting the right key. Finding out the dark of a portal is uh, the toughest part. But I warn you lad, portal hopping shouldn't be a pastime for a fella in your way. Nor should you be wandering sigil after dark neither. You do best to stick to the main ways in open peak and watch yourself. Uh, you already had that, okay. Hmm, this is really tricky with the portals and the keys. So, you know, someone named Farad? Farad at frowns, takes the pipe from his mouth. Now, lad, what do you be wanting with a burg like Farad? I think he stole some of my belongings. 
Oh no doubt lad, no doubt a grumbles chewing on his pipe. You have to chain up everything around that grasping little spider. He should have been one of the fated the way anything Heh, he should have been one of the fated the way anything not chained down slips into his parlor. Don't give him a yard or he'll take a leak, eh? What do you know about him? Well, I know I don't know Well I now I don't know everything there is to know about Old Ferret, but I know some of the dark surrounding him. If you determine to track down that spider and nail him to a wall, then I suppose I could spill some of the chant so you know what you're trangling with. He pauses to temp his pipe. Ferret dug his nest deep into Rag Picker Square not too long ago and got a bunch of collectors and gangs together and started what one could almost consider a collecting faction, be it as it may. Where can I find him? Well, lad, if you're looking for fur, which I would say is pretty balmy of you, you're a little off the beaten path. You want to be finding Red Pig or Square. Chances that Ferret set up his skip somewhere in the square. Even an old fella like me, who's been around the ring a few times, don't know exactly where. I figure that Ferret wants to keep the dark of his location dark. If you're all bound and determined to find Ferret, go direct, pick a square and try and dig up Ferret's location from some of the locals. Try and be careful about it, since there's plenty in the square that would make a gut hop out of you as soon as you'll as look at him. Hmm? Red Picker Square then. Okay, I'm missing a journal. You're missing a journal? Was there more to the journal than just pages and words? Otherwise I can't imagine too many bloods who would bother themselves with letters unless it was really hot and spicy. Not much use for books of learning around here. I don't know where you might find such a thing. Ab puffs on his pipe. Then he snaps his fingers. But you know, lad, if Farad is the one you, who scraped you off the Sigil Street, then he might know the dark of where your stuff is. It's most likely in his larder, if you ask me. A dead man is usually in no position, position to keep his possessions when the collectors tumble across his body. Yeah, we already had to think with Farad. Well, 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 who are you? Did we have that? Ab Creekneys. Third measure of the harmonium, now retired and being a tout with one's voice since I don't step as lightly as I might these past two or three decades. Decades, he chuckles. Now, lad, who be you and what trouble might you be in? Third measure of the harmonium? F puffs up slightly in pride and gets a semi-stern look on his face. I, third measure of the harmonium, he relaxes a little, though I haven't served the tour of duty in many a decade. Pushing a quill wasn't quite up my alley after all the fights and skirmishes I've been in, so I just bide my time keeping tabs on things down here in the hive and helping out a little where I can. And you look like someone who might need a hand. Are you in some kind of trouble, lad? A few troubles. I woke up in the mortuary and seem to have forgotten who I am. Yeah, how, how's that? <laughs> how do you like the truth, eh? Eh? A blinks and frowns. What was that you said, lad? That you woke up in the mortuary? Ab studies you closely. Oh, now did they mistake you for that? And under all them under all them scars, mayhap? Ab chuckles. Can't say I would have been any smarter. He puffs his pipe. Damn dusties. He catches himself. I mean, them, dustmen. Dust is being a rude term to refer to them, pale faced fellas. I don't mean them too much disrespect. They have all the perceptions and friendliness of a gravestone sometimes, eh? Can't say I couldn't see them screwing that up, no lad. That's what I've heard. I've had some other questions. Um. Can we get some more information about you? Uh, what's a tout? Well, now it's a good thing you asked that because now you've told me that you're green and a tout about the best person a clueless could have run into on the streets of Sigil. And I'm just the man someone like you is in need of. He takes a drink. A tout's a friendly city guide who shows you what's what, gives you a little jaunt around town, a guide. I, a guide is the best way to look at it. Except I don't really leave this chair on account of my age, so mostly I well actually standing. Um, so mostly I suggest directions and places you might want to see in your travels in our fresh city. 
doesn't cost a cent. Why is it free? A tout who can't move can't command much of a prize land by the powers would be unfair to judge for just a bag of words. How old are you? Old enough to know better, lad, and too old to walk much. He puffs on his pipe. Let's just say my best years are behind me. There's only a few irons that keep this heart beating. What irons? Well, lad, not to bring down the conversation, but I'm hoping that one day a hol holy fella will be making his way to the old smoldering corpse one. Hopefully he'll shrive me off some of my private sins so I can go on and step off this plane for good. Okay. What is this place? Um, yeah, just mooring corpse ballad. Not a pretty place as some, but it's got its own homespun kind of charm. Tell me about the patrons here. Well, you got O, who claims to be a letter instead of a person, some mercy killers waiting around for a criminal, a pair of Abby Shy on furlough from the Blood War, a Gitzerai over there who's been watching you from afar. Not too unusual, mind you. They're puri cutters in LA down here, a clueless kid whose britches seem to be just a bit too tight, if you get my meaning. <laughs> if you're wanting information on the planes, talk to Kendry and Ilborn over there. He knows more than most I know. Who's this murdering corpse there? Him? Oh, no corpse, lad. No data, no data, him. Near as we can tell, it, all Ignis is still alive inside that little roast spit. Near as we can figure, anyway, Ab wrinkles his nose. He can smell damnably awful sometimes, too. Keeps me on the pipe to make sure it don't worm its way into my nose, it does. He chuckles. How did he get here? Ab takes a smoke from his pipe for a moment as if deciding how to phrase his comment. Well, now that Ignis had a smattering of problems and some not slight wizardly magics to boot. And seldom uh, do the two mix well, if you understand me. He liked to ebb puffs on his pipe and smoke turns up. Well, he liked to burn things, and he started touching places and people and generally making a bunch of trouble. And, well, now most of this was going on in the hive, and I'll be the first to admit that the hive is not the first place the harmonium goes to keep Sigil's law. Ebb looks a little shamefaced. A failing on our part since it may be the place where our presence is most needed. So, by the lady's reckoning, there was a little street side justice in the wizardry community. A bunch of tea leaf readers, hedge wizards, and midwife witches got together and managed to weave a spell that was kind of poetic justice. A gestures with his pipe at the figure. So now he sits there and burns. He's still alive, which I don't think they counted on. Mm -hmm. I had some other questions. Anything else about the patrons? No. What's good to drink here? Well, not some say I've got baitoral discrimination when it comes to drink, but I've got drinks I'm partial to and some vintages to which I'm not. Actually, one of my favorite little things to get here is some arborean fire seeds. You will you swill them in your mouth, add a little air and some spit and some alcohol and you can breathe a little fire when you need to. Least way, that's how it feels. Okay, maybe we should try this. Uh, oh, we already had that. Thanks. Uh, what other places can you recommend? Well, a puffs on his pipe and studies you. This is perhaps the best cape you could have wandered into from the start. Judging by your tattoos, you might be partial to having designs on your body, in which case there's a tattoo saloon, a little spire ward from here. You want to stay away from the alley of dangerous angles if you can. Ignis torched that place not long ago, well, apparently centuries ago. And ever since, a bunch of bad bloods have set up their cape in that street of desert. desert. I think that's pretty much all we can get out of him. And it was a lot of information. Where is that? I'm gone. Still looking for some people here. Well, we will look for them in the next video. Wait. Oh, wait. That guy is almost invisible. That's why I didn't see him. Okay. We'll talk to him in the next one. 
So, well, thank you very much for watching, and see you soon. Bye.